Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Now this is our fifth emulation video in our series and today we'll be looking at the Sega Model 2 arcade system. Now the Sega Model 2 had a number of great games from the 1990s, Daytona, House of the Dead, Sega Rally Championship, some absolute first class titles. And we'll be looking at emulating them on the Sega Model 2 emulator. Before we go to that, of course you'll need some games. As ever, on a YouTube video, I can't tell you exactly where to find them, but perhaps a benevolent young YouTuber has left in a link below a guide to where you might find games, ROMs, and console and arcade games across the internet. Anyway, here are my games. They're on my desktop for ease. As you can see, there's quite a number of different versions, but we'll get back onto that quite shortly. There's no requirement for a BIOS with a Model 2 emulator. Let's get down to downloading it and crack on. So I'll leave a link in the description below for the website. Here's the emulator. It's been around for quite a while, since around 2014, but it works really well. And if it ain't broke, why try and fix it? Let's download that. And we'll just save the file. That was really quick. Let's go to Downloads, unzip the file, and then we'll just transfer it to our desktop. OK, here's the emulator. As you can see, there are two execute files. As you have a multi-threaded CPU, we're using the multi-CPU execute file. Now the emulator in here is part of the setup process. You'll need to tell the emulator where your ROM files are. By default it will look for a ROM folder in this folder. But if you go into the INI, you can just see there where the folder will be looked for. What you can do, he says. So again, here we are. This is where we need to put our new folder path. So you can create a folder in this directory or simply tell it where it is. So we'll just go to where our games are, copy the path, paste that into place, and just make sure we move the semicolon from the front to make sure it's readable on the any file. There we go, we'll save that down. And now we can get on with perhaps looking at some games. So we'll try Daytona. Here we go. Now this is not unusual. This is an arcade machine. And this particular one when it starts off is assuming it's part of a multiple number of machines. So you press F2 to go into the test menu. Go down to where it's looking for and change that to single. Then exit out, and then the game should boot without trouble. As I said, it's not unusual for arcade machines to have these sort of glitches. So here we are. Okay, we're just going to set up a controller now. Now you have to set up your controller in each game. Um, for driving games, you can use your analog sticks, and the Z axis is your trigger buttons. So the right one. We invert, the left one we just select as Z, and that will give us acceleration and brake on the analog triggers, and the steering's already set to analog steering. So here we are. Classic Daytona. Now you can play around with the auto screen and try and get to widescreen, depends on your monitor. Sometimes the monitor will auto default or the system will auto default to widescreen. So play around with it to get the setting you like. I like it in 4x3 but it also looks quite good in, in widescreen, it doesn't really affect gameplay. And I do apologise, I have left my mouse cursor right in the middle of the screen which is a schoolboy error. But I really could not be bothered to go back and re-record this. Um, it still gives you a great idea of what the game looks like and plays like. I have to admit, playing this, the analog stick is quite sensitive. 
Anyway, moving on, here we are with Virtual Cop. Now the mouse is automatically configured without any further action in, in this emulator. It's left button to fire, right button to reload. And this is just great fun. All the shooters on Model 2 are just fantastic fun. They're real classics. And in many respects, this and Daytona and Sega Rally are really why you want to emulate this arcade machine. These weren't ported brilliantly well, so it really is great to have a look at them. Here are now a House of the Dead, another classic shooter. I have to admit, I've indulged myself a bit with this video, lots and lots of different games, because there are some real, real great games on this, and I had great fun running through them all. And you're lucky you've only got 30 seconds of each, because I could be playing this for hours. That will give you nightmares. Anyway, Virtua Cop 2. We're really running through the uh, shooters here. Now, if you have any problems with the cursor, you can go into the test menu and reconfigure. They have a reconfigure option, just like we did for the Daytona setting. F2 to go in, F1 to select the configuration, and you'll have a, a left and right position to click on with your mouse to reconfigure the mouse so it's the cursor on the screen is where you'd want it to be. But again, this looks absolutely great. It's really great fun to play. But now here's my absolute favorite, Sega Rally Championship. Still looks great. I mean, this game is 26 years old, 25 years old. It looks amazing. I mean, it's not Forza Horizon 4, don't get me wrong, but it still looks really good and it's really great fun to play. I'm definitely going to be building a, a driving cab pretty soon. I'm really looking forward to getting this on that with a, a proper steering wheel set up. I'm really going for it. Okay, the original Dead or Alive, the start of Bounce. That's a great game for an arcade cab. When well, you do configure the controllers, you can use analog sticks, you can use keyboard. Um, it accepts anything really, so it's quite easy to set up. And to put in a cab with a keyboard encoder is really quite straightforward. Uh, and this really is a great game to have a go at. Okay, then moving on. Bit of a strange one, Pilot Kids. It's a bit of an odd of chewed them up. It's not what you'd expect really, but um, it's not a game I've really played much, but it's good to get some different examples of what the Model 2 can do. Um, this is quite fun, great game for kids. And a bit of fun if you like a, a shoot em up whatever it is they're called. Anyway, <laughs> Indy 500, another classic. Obviously this is effect Daytona with a different car. Plays very, very similar. Looks very, very similar. It's like different cars, but another great game to have a go at. Another great reason to emulate with this emulator. Who would have thought going around an oval circuit would be quite so tricky? Okay, Dynamite Cop. This is good fun. A bit of a beat em up come combat game. Someone needs to explain to me why this woman keeps losing all her clothes as she goes through this game. I really can't understand. I'm not sure if the male characters do as well. I'll have to look at that. But it seems rather out of place in today's society. There you go. Very weird. Anyway, good game to play. Good fun. And finally, just to show you what else this can do. Sonic the Fighters, another great beat em up fighting game. Another one that's great for kids. Another one that's great in a cabinet. This has no problem with two players. As you can see from the setup earlier on, it's easy to configure for two controllers or for two keyboards. Sorry, for two keyboards, for two, key, for two players for a key, keyboard emulator. Keyboard encoder, I should say. Anyway, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. As I say, this is a weekly series along with our build videos, so do consider subscribing. Until next one, go well.